so that's anywhere, that, say, for instance, where you attach files, uh, uploading assignment files, anything like that, where you're attaching a file. So, uh, so again, if you're familiar with Moodle, you know within a course you've got these two menus when you're editing it, so add a resource, add an activity. They're still there, um, and for those, if you didn't know, the difference really is that a resource is static. It's just something you kind of view or you grab and you look at. Activities are meant to be interactive in some way. Um, the resources have had a bit of work done on them, uh, mainly on the naming. So uh, you'll see that it's all simplified down a bit. Uh, <laughs> so where before you used to have linked to a file or a website, uh, now you've got a file or a URL. You can have one of them. It just makes sense. Uh, that's all. Um, one of the ones that just annoyed everyone for ages was compose a text page or compose a web page. Um, it was kind of redundant having composed a text page because it's like composing a web page without any formatting. Uh, so now there's just one page. Okay. So that's all that one is. Uh, and you can choose whether to put formatting in there or not. Uh, it's up to you. So, uh, so they're just renamed. Those folders the same label, IMS content packages. So, um, basically just renamed it, made it very simple for people to use. Activities and activity completion. Uh, of, I think probably the biggest things from a teaching point of view uh, or pedagogy point of view. Uh, to, to explain what those are, and I'll show you examples of these, um, uh, let me start with the conditional activities. Um, so the idea of conditional activities is that you cannot, cannot do this activity or view this resource until some set of requirements have been met, basically. Um, which is really nice because it might mean you have to do this quiz. If you haven't got over, say, 80%, then no, you can't move on in the course. You have to keep doing that quiz. Uh, when Martin first set up Moodle, it was, the idea was it was actually meant to read like your course outline. That's why it has a topics format, you know, it has all the activities in there. It would read like a, an outline for your course for that semester, except they're interactive. You could click on the different links. However, you could go in any order you wanted, because you could go right down the bottom first and do whichever activities you wanted. There might be instructions in the course to say no, um, go through, and the teacher might manually hide activities until some date. However, now you can control uh, how people go through a course with the conditional activities. Now, the administrators need to turn these systems on, by the way. Uh, it's in the site administration, uh, advanced features. Uh, so it's off by default, but if you turn it on, then it can be used throughout the site. Uh, I've pretty much gone through and turned everything on. But, yeah. So there's all the forum settings like you'd normally set up a forum. However, there's a section down here. I said, uh, restrict availability, that section in there. Uh, and so all that is, is you putting in conditions. When can someone actually access it, this activity? Now, it might be just purely based on a, a date. Uh, maybe you do want to release things by date. So you can't view this PDF until week two of the semester or whatever it is. Um, if you want to, you can base it on other activities. So in this case, for this forum, I've actually said, if in assignment two, uh, if you've got less than 50%, you can actually access this forum. In my other forum, what I've done is say if you've got more than 50%, you can access this forum. So I've actually split how, how everyone's gone through the course. Um, so it might be you have to get more than 60% in a quiz. So you can put whatever you want in there based on other activities. Or total. So you could base it, if your course total is above this so far, then you can access this activity or whatever it is. Um, there's also the idea of completion, which I'll get to. So if you've completed some other activity, then you can access this one. Um, so there's all the different resources and activities in this course. Uh, so there you go. And how you want to display that, I've got it as uh, show the activity grayed out. In other words, the user can see that it's there, but they just can't access it. Uh, you could actually hide it completely, so they have no idea what's coming up. So it might be... Potentially, you just might have a course, the first day they come to class or come into the Moodle course it might just be one PDF, that's it, and you might release it by date and time, so tomorrow there'll be an assignment that's there, um, and then you might say, look, there's an extra PDF or some other activity you can do, but only when you've got 80% in the, in the assignment, or whatever it is. Um, you've got complete control over how people go through your course and do those activities now. And as I said, I'll get back to my course. Um, so what I've got down here, I oh, know I've got the editing on, sorry, I've got icons everywhere. 
But you'll see there, um, so a student would actually see that grayed out, and they would see Mahoodle, PDF on Moodle Mahara, um, but it's restricted. It's not available until the activity a page of text, which is up the top, is marked complete. So they actually see these requirements in my case, but they said you might hide it completely. So they don't know what the requirements are, they just have to somehow get through their course. Um, and as I said here, these forums I've actually split up. So this one is if, based on this assignment above it, the first forum is if you get less than 50%, the second forum is if you get greater than 50%. So suddenly my users have gone through my course and then I've split off. And then I could actually keep them separate if I wanted to. Yeah. Can you can you add your own conditional activities? So for example, uh, with attendance. If you have not attended the uh, third, or are you restricted to? Uh, it's a good question. Um, no, it's based on the Moodle activity, so it's, yeah. So we, it, you kind of restrict it to completion, which might work for that. I know there's an attendance module as well, um, but it's, no one's upgraded it yet, so yeah. Each module can implement its own stuff as well, so um, it have to score it in some way. Yeah. Again, the answer is, yeah, potentially, yes, it can, um, but with anyone's done it or not, for those party ones. Alright, I'll move on. I'll talk about completion because it kind of ties in with this as well. Uh, so one of the other problems with Moodle currently is there's no concept of completion for an activity. Uh, just because you get 60% in a quiz doesn't mean you've completed it. Or, you know, know what I mean? So um, you can grade something without completing it. They're two very different concepts. Uh, and also, we deal a lot, and it doesn't apply to universities and schools, uh, but we deal a lot with training organisations, and what they really care about is, has someone completed the course? And um, so quite often we write reports for them, but we actually have to get all these rules saying, well, what, what does completion mean to you? Does it mean that everyone, they've viewed every resource? Does it mean they've got over 80% as a course total? What does completion mean? Um, so we, we customise a lot of sites based on that now. However, in Moodle 2, it's done. Um, there is a concept of completion in there. Uh, so, again with these activities, uh, and you have to turn this on site-wide, but each activity, I go and edit my page of text, uh, blah, blah, blah. there we go, conditional, the completion. Uh, so there's two options, oh, it's three options, I guess. Uh, we don't really care about completion, that's the default. Uh, the other one is a student can manually say, I've completed this. Because you could actually say to students, look, here's all the different activities, you tell me when you've completed it. Um, in this case, it's a resource, so check it off when you've read it, um, if you want to. Um, the other one is, show it as complete when some conditions are met. Um, so Moodle will actually automatically mark it as complete when some conditions are met. And uh, in this case, it's a resource. Now, this will depend on what it is. If it's a, an activity, like an assignment, completion, you can put in a grade saying complete is when you've got 50% or whatever it is. In this case, because it's just a resource, they must have viewed it. That's, that's the rules. And you can put in the expected completion date, so they can know when they should be going through these things. Uh, expected date. So if I save and return to my course, uh, there it is there. Uh, now what you'll see down here, if you've got completion, uh, these activity completions on, and you have to set this for the course as well, um, there's, so there's site settings, and there's course settings, they say for this course I want to use completion activities, and there's also a concept of course completion. They get these little checkboxes everywhere. And so that's per user. So as a student, I come in, uh, some of these will be greyed out, so I can't actually click these ones because they're, they're based on some conditions. Moodle is the one that's going to mark them as complete. Um, so what the point I'm trying to make, these ones here I can actually manually check off. However, this one here that I just added at the top, underneath my use for it, I can't check it because it's based on some criteria I just set up. So uh, Moodle's the one that has to tick that off. Okay, uh, typically, with regards to students who do a written assignment, we would like them to say submit it through, turn it in, so that you yeah. can then grade it. Can this system do it? Yes, uh, Moodle too. So for things like Turnitin, there's actually a current Turnitin integration for Moodle, uh, so you can actually get it running. Is that what you're about to turn it in for? Um, yeah, you currently you can do it, you have to kind of change the code a bit. Uh, Moodle 2, although I haven't got it running on this one, uh, does support plagiarism software, um, just as plugins. So Turnitin will come with Moodle 2. Um, yeah, so out of the box, you still need an account with Turnitin to make it work. Uh, but out of the box, yeah, so when someone submits an assignment, I actually send it to Turnitin, come back with a report, and uh, 
then still the teacher needs to look at the report and grade it, but yes, you get those type things. Um, it's done as a plugin because it actually is other uh, software out there like Strike Plagiarism and there's another big one. I've forgotten. Anyway, they've got an integration for Moodle as well. Um, so they're just plugins, you choose how they work. Uh, Moodle won't do anything with it. All it does is send it to turn in and brings the report back for the teacher to view. Um, I saw Dan Marsden who wrote all the plagiarism code for Moodle 2. He actually did a very good demonstration of it at the New Zealand Moodle conference earlier in the year. As he said, you might get a report back saying that someone has 90% of their assignment is copied, but it actually might be valid, because they might have actually referenced it all, you know, and done quotes properly. Um, so they said, you've kind of got to take these reports and put it in context. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, yeah, obviously Moodle can't make those decisions for you. It just shows you the report, and you still need to decide as a teacher. It needs a human in there to do it for you. Oh, by the way, you can see that I'm logged in as a student right now. So um, my blocks aren't docked because the student hasn't docked their blocks. They're appearing on the right-hand side. Um, anyway, let me get back as me. Should have done that course completion one. Oops. Uh, as a teacher, I might do course completion as well. Um, there's a course completion block, which doesn't make sense to a teacher, that's for a student. Uh, but I might say there's requirements for course completion. Um, I can say you have to have completed this set of five activities and maybe a, one of the teachers has to mark you off as being complete and as a student you have to sign off saying I've completed this course. Once all those requirements are met, then the course is actually marked completed for you. Um, so Moodle has a concept not just of activity completion now, but of course completion based on some criteria as well. And so that's what this block is for. Is my course completion status. And as I say, I'm logged in as a teacher again, so it doesn't make sense. Uh, if you want to play with these, by the way, it's a site qa.moodle.net. Uh, so anyone can go apply the Moodle 2 code, so don't feel like you've just seen this and can't go and use it. You can. Uh, the, these two, a lot of the activities have rewrites underneath. These two are probably the biggest. Um, so the wiki, uh, they just, Moodle had used, um, I think it was DF wiki or EF, I can't remember, one of those letters. Um, it was actually third party wiki software um, underneath. Oh, it was just horrible, really. <laughs> um, everyone put up with it for a while, but it wasn't the nicest thing. Uh, and they just grabbed new, new wiki software underneath and used it for Moodle 2, and it works so much nicer. Um, if you use the old Moodle wiki, you know it's hard to embed things like images and so on. Uh, now it just works with an editor. Any user can em embed a, an image, which is great for students, because quite often you want to write something and embed an image or something like that. They can. It just works. Um, so much nicer. It's got much nicer histories. Even have got maps of how the files link together and so on. So, uh, so just talking about that. Um, quiz module. Uh, Tim Hunt, who maintains it, uh, he works at Open University in the UK. But he's rewritten the quiz module. Um, so it's got a nice Ajaxy interface to it all now. Uh, so it, again, it was one of those interfaces that was just horrible from a teacher's point of view. Uh, it's just rewritten it, and it works nice. Underneath it hasn't really changed much, the same question types kind of works with all the settings for the quiz at the same, it's just a nicer interface than how it runs. Uh, 